Welcome to the latest episode of the Business English Podcast. In this episode, we'll be kicking off a three-part series on a very important aspect of business communication, negotiating. Negotiating is a key skill in the world of business, and it's essential to know the right phrases and language to use to achieve your objectives. Whether you're trying to secure a better deal for your company or resolve a conflict with a business partner, knowing the right phrases to use can make all the difference. So, if you're looking to improve your negotiation skills in business English, this episode is where it all begins. In this first of three episodes, we'll be covering the phrases and vocabulary you will need to make a positive impact and get your negotiation moving in the right direction. Getting the start of a negotiation right is crucial for setting the tone and direction of the entire negotiation. The beginning of a negotiation is when first impressions are formed, and it is the time when the parties establish their goals, priorities and expectations. A strong start can help to build trust, establish rapport and create a collaborative atmosphere that encourages creative problem solving and compromise. On the other hand, a poor start can create tension, mistrust and an adversarial atmosphere that makes it difficult to reach a mutually beneficial agreement. Therefore, it is essential to prepare carefully and approach the start of a negotiation with a clear strategy, effective communication skills and a willingness to listen and understand the other party's perspective. By getting the start of a negotiation right, you can set the stage for a successful outcome and build a strong foundation for future collaborations. So with the stakes at such a dizzying height, let's take a brief interlude before moving on. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Business English Podcast, helping professionals communicate more effectively, more confidently and with impact. With your host, Rob, from Energetic English. Let's get down to business. Now, there is no fixed format for a negotiation in business English, as negotiations can vary widely depending on the nature of the negotiation, the parties involved and the desired outcome. However, negotiations in Business English typically follow a general structure that includes the following stages. Number one, preparation. This stage involves researching and gathering information about the other party, their goals and their negotiation style. It also involves setting your own goals and objectives for the negotiation and preparing your strategy and tactics. Two, opening. This stage involves making introductions and setting the tone for negotiation. This could involve a little small talk, so make sure you go back to the previous episodes on the Business English Podcast and polish up those small talk skills if you are indeed a little rusty. And at this opening stage, it may also involve you outlining your goals and objectives and establishing ground rules for the negotiation. 3. Exploration This stage involves exchanging information and exploring each other's interests and priorities. It may involve asking questions, listening actively and probing for more information. Again, a lot of these skills we've already discussed on the Business English Podcast, so you can find plenty of help in some of the other episodes. 4. Bargaining Now, this is really the stage where we will begin our three-part negotiation series, as it is in these moments where more specific vocabulary and phrases are required. Up until now, a number of other skills are required, such as small talk and asking effective questions, all of which have been covered on other episodes. So, if you are unsure, please go back and check them out. So, bargaining. This stage involves making offers and counter-offers, negotiating the terms of the agreement and finding ways to create value for both parties. 5. Closure. This stage involves reaching a final agreement, summarising the key points of the agreement and confirming any next steps or actions that need to be taken. 
6. Follow-up. This stage involves following up on the agreements and ensuring that both parties are fulfilling their obligations. So, with the wider format of the negotiation laid down, let's look at exactly what's involved in this episode. In this first episode on negotiation, we will be covering three essential elements. 1. Important phrasal verbs for negotiation. This section aims to develop your own bank of vocabulary for building your own phrases, enabling you to respond more appropriately when the dialogue becomes more, well, dynamic. 2. Phrases for making an offer. These statements are all about you simply making your offer, in addition to a number of supporting phrases. 3. Phrases for responding to an offer. These are a bank of phrases that you can immediately deploy when responding to an offer, to have you sound cool, calm and in control, even though you may not feel like it. Right, with all that preamble out of the way, let's get around the negotiation table. Now, as we mentioned, let's first look at 10 phrasal verbs specific to negotiation. Familiarising yourself with these and having them at the back of your mind during a negotiation may allow you greater dexterity in your responses and enable you to sound more natural. For this section, I will give the phrasal verb its meaning and then an example. There will be no pause for you in this section, so just sit back, relax and take note. 1. Hold out. To refuse to agree to a deal until certain conditions are met. For example, we're willing to purchase your items, but we need you to hold out until we receive a guarantee of quality. 2. Bargain for. To expect or anticipate a particular outcome in a negotiation. For example, we were bargaining for a volume discount on the items, but the seller was not willing to offer one. 3. Hammer out. To work out the details of a deal through negotiation. For example, we spent several hours hammering out the details of the agreement until we finally reached a mutually beneficial solution. 4. Walk away. To end negotiations without reaching an agreement. For example, we were unable to come to a consensus on the price, so we had to walk away from the deal. 5. Back down. To withdraw from a position or offer in a negotiation. For example, after further discussion, the seller agreed to back down on the delivery terms and accept our proposed solution. 6. Bring down. To lower the price or reduce the cost of something. For example, if you could bring down the price of the items, we would be more likely to place a larger order. 7. Hold off. To delay or postpone a decision or action until a later time. For example, we've decided to hold off on making our final decision until we have more information about the items. 8. Talk over to discuss something thoroughly with another person in order to reach an agreement. For example, let's talk over the details of the agreement and see if we can find a solution that works for both parties. 9. Iron out. To resolve or smooth out any issues or disagreements that arise during a negotiation. For example, we need to iron out a few details before we can finalise the agreement and move forward. 10. Give in. To agree the demands or requests of the other party during a negotiation. For example, after some discussion, we decided to give in to the seller's request for shorter lead times on the items. Now, I appreciate that was fairly rapid fire, so do go back through and listen to those once again. Listen to how I'm using those phrasal verbs within the wider context of the sentences. Drill them and have them ready to use next time you're around the negotiation table.
Now, as we mentioned earlier, remembering and using just a few of these will really enhance the quality of your speech during a negotiation, enabling you to come across more professional and hopefully in control. Right, in this section, we will be looking at 10 phrases you can use in a negotiation to make an offer and additional supporting statements. For these phrases, I will repeat them twice before pausing for you to take notes, drill and work your magic. Right, let's begin. 1. I'd like to propose an offer that I think will work for the both of us. I'd like to propose an offer that I think will work for the both of us. Two, let me make you an offer. Let me make you an offer. Three, we're prepared to offer you a competitive price for the items. We're prepared to offer you a competitive price for the items. Four, how about we offer you a volume discount for a larger order? How about we offer you a volume discount for a larger order? 5. We can offer you a package deal that includes additional services. We can offer you a package deal that includes additional services. 6. Our initial offer is £1,000, but we're open to negotiation. Our initial offer is £1,000, but we're open to negotiation. 7. We can sweeten the deal by £1,000 if you're interested. We can sweeten the deal by £1,000 if you're interested. 8. We're willing to negotiate on the price or delivery terms to make this deal work for the both of us. We're willing to negotiate on the price or delivery terms to make this deal work for the both of us. 9. We're confident that our offer is fair and reflects the value of the items. We're confident that our offer is fair and reflects the value of the items. 10. If you accept our offer, we can move forward with finalising the agreement. If you accept our offer, we can move forward with finalising the agreement. 11. Remember that these are just examples and you could very easily combine them into a combination of phrases to have at your disposal. I encourage you to form your own unique phrases that you're happy with from the aforementioned phrases. For example, our initial offer is a thousand pound, but we're open to negotiation. We're willing to negotiate on the price or delivery terms to make this deal work for the both of us. And if you accept our offer, we can move forward with finalizing the agreement. Have a go at experimenting with them yourself and perhaps even use a few new phrases of your own. In this final section of today's episode, we will look at the phrases we can use to respond to an offer. Now, once again, I will repeat them twice before pausing. So, let's begin. 1. Thank you for your offer, but it's not quite what we had in mind. Thank you for your offer, but it's not quite what we had in mind. 2. I appreciate the offer, but we were hoping for something a bit more competitive. I appreciate the offer, but we were hoping for something a bit more competitive. 3. That's a generous offer, but I'm afraid it's still out of our price range. That's a generous offer, but I'm afraid it's still out of our price range. 4. We'll need to review the offer more closely before we can make a decision. 
we'll need to review the offer more closely before we can make a decision. Five, could you provide additional details about the offer? Could you provide additional details about the offer? Six, let me get back to you after discussing the offer with my team. Let me get back to you after discussing the offer with my team. Seven, we're interested in your offer, but we'd like to negotiate on a few key terms. We're interested in your offer, but we'd like to negotiate on a few key terms. Eight. Your offer is competitive, but we're considering other options as well. Your offer is competitive, but we're considering other options as well. Nine. We're willing to work with you to find a mutually beneficial solution. We're willing to work with you to find a mutually beneficial solution. 10. Can we discuss the offer further and see if we can find a way to make it work for both parties? Can we discuss the offer further and see if we can find a way to make it work for both parties? 10. Now again, like the previous set of phrases, I encourage you to combine these with other phrases in order to make your own natural responses for when you are in a negotiation. This will help improve your confidence and help you take ownership of your own dialogue, which will ultimately really help you during these high pressure, high stakes situations. Right, that's all for today's episode on how to start a negotiation effectively. Be sure to join us for the following two episodes in the series where we look at how to continue negotiations successfully and how to close a negotiation professionally. We hope you found these phrases and tips useful and gained some valuable insights on how to negotiate effectively in a business context. Now remember, negotiating is an ongoing process and it's important to practice and refine your skills over time. So take the time to review the phrases we've covered today and start incorporating them into your own negotiations. With the right approach and language, you can achieve successful outcomes and build strong business relationships. You have been listening to the Business English Podcast. Remember to subscribe, leave a review, and we'll see you next time.